guys, it's Debbie. Today I'm sharing a card that I made using the new Holiday Gnome stamp set and the Oh Christmas Tree die set from Spellbinders. These little gnomes are just too stinking cute. So I'm starting off, I'm going to go ahead and stamp those out and color them to put on my card. I'm not real sure as to how I'm going to decorate my card yet, but I'm going ahead and using my stamp platform to make sure I get a good impression to start off with. To heat emboss the images before I color them so I'm putting down some um, some anti-static powder and then I'm going to use some Versamark um, I'm sorry Versafine onyx black ink I want the lines um, of the drawing to be very very crisp and dark and I don't know what it is but the look of little images die cut out after having been heat embossed in black before being colored, I just absolutely love the way that that looks. The Versamark ink always turns out so nice and dark, and I'm going ahead and covering this, this sticky ink. This ink basically stays wet for quite a while, and I'm covering it in some clear embossing powder. This is going to give the illusion that I embossed in black um, embossing powder, which I don't really like doing because I get the embossing powder basically everywhere I don't want it. This always turns out well though. Next I'm going to do some simple coloring. At least part of this is simple. I'm starting off with trying to do the little beards and mustaches on all of my little gnomes and just using a touch of some grays to kind of give it a little bit of dimension. I'm also trying to use a flicking motion using my Spectrum Noir pens. Now if you've seen any of my videos lately, you know I've been kind of leaning more towards the Parku markers because the tips, the tips of those nibs are just firmer and those markers are more pigmented so you can get those little bits um, for definition a lot better. My Spectrum Noir markers, though, I absolutely love for all of the blending. And it was closer to hand this time, so I'm going ahead and using it. So I'm using a little bit of a flicking motion coming um, basically from the areas that need a little bit of shadow. And to be honest, I think that the beards turned out pretty good. Um, to me, after I get done, it kind of looks a little bit... I don't know, platinum or metallic. You guys let me know what you think and point me in the direction of some good videos that show using Spectrum Noir markers for doing this kind of technique. I know of lots and lots and lots of them that use, um, that use the Copics. Not too many of them use the Spectrum Noir though, um, but I think that this turned out okay. You guys let me know what you think. The rest of the coloring though, once I get past those beards and mustaches, is going to be really, really simple. I'm going to use, for each of the blends, I'm using pretty much two to three colors using a not really scary dark, but a dark, dark color for the, um, for the shadows and then a pretty light one for the light tones and then I've got a nice color in the middle to kind of balance them out. Once all the coloring's done, I went ahead and cut them out over on my scan and cut. I also cut out a second layer just from white cardstock, and it's real easy to do with the machine. And then I'm layering up the two layers of cardstock. Now, the reason that I do this is I feel that it, I don't know, it gives a little bit more polished look and a little bit more substantial um, embellishment, if you will. Um, 
that I've just created out of those little gnome images. I love the way it looks with it layered up like that. I've do done this for a few years. I don't always, but most of the time I will do at least two layers for most of my stamped images. Next I'm going to work on the background. I've taken a piece of just regular green cardstock. This is just some cardstock from Michaels. And I'm going to add some, I don't know, some distress ink. I'm going to kind of distress it around the edges on all four sides with some distress ink um, in some darkish green shades. I'm using Rustic Wilderness and I think it's Pine Needles as my two greens that I'm going to kind of mix in together there. Now, one of the reasons that I like doing my ink blending on colored cardstock, it's not really smooth or anything like that, but if I make any mistakes putting green ink on green cardstock, it's not going to be really noticeable. So I really like using my colored cardstock for this. I mean, I don't really use it for a whole lot else. Next, I'm going to get into my Oak Christmas Tree die set. It was in my last video. And take the stencil out that I created by cutting out that, um, that tree shape. And I'm going to put some little trees, some tree kind of shadows and shapes in the background for my little gnomes to be in front of. As I'm putting these tree images down, I'm not really being very careful with it. I'm just moving my stencil around, adding a little bit of ink, put more ink in places that I want the tree to stand out more, you know, like being further to the front, putting a little light um, shadow for the trees that'll be kind of in the background and shifting the, the stencil all over the place. To be honest, I, I, I don't really know how to describe it, but I was just amazed at how much I liked this when I was done. It really looks like those little gnomes are standing in the, basically in the middle of a little forest. But then I thought, you know, I think the gnomes need a little bit more behind them than just the trees. So I'm, I took out my little splat box and I'm going to be adding some Perfect Pearls DIY shimmer or splatter spray that I made a while back. It's just uh, perfect pearls and water. So I added some splatter in gold and then I got out the perfect pearl color and did a lot more. more. I think I went a little bit crazy because I was trying to get, I was trying to cover the areas that I didn't get and my direction on this is not good yet. I need a bunch more practice. Once it was dry, and I did use my heat tool to help that along, I'm going to go ahead and stamp out a Merry Christmas sentiment from that stamp set. I'm also using um, some ink that I hadn't used before. I just got this. This is the Delicata from Tuscan Echo, and I'm trying it out for the first time. I figure I'm going to do gold heat embossing, but how would that look with some gold ink underneath it? Next, I'll add some gold embossing powder from Recollections over the top and hit that with my heat tool. I know, I can't help it. I just love that magic. <laughs> it's just magical the way that it just brightens up and shines up whenever you heat up that powder with your heat gun. And I just got to keep going. I'm adding some silver, well, glitter embossing powder over some of those real pretty little um, snowflakes that are included in this set. So I'm going to go ahead and cover the panel with a lot of different little, um, little snowflakes. So now I'm going to start putting the card together. First, I am trimming down a silver panel to act as a matting layer, and I'm trimming down that little panel that we had. My background panel, I'm going to trim down to three and three quarters by five, and that matting layer is going to be about a quarter inch larger on both sides. A reason for that is I want to leave a little bitty, basically a little mat around the edges. It's going to be about an eighth of an inch 
and then I'm going to put all of this onto a an A2 size green card base. Before I add that panel that down though, I decided to put some foam tape on the back of each of my little gnomes. I want them to pop up just a touch, and then I'm going to try to get them, I don't know, centered and positioned on the front of the card panel before I adhere that down. Then I'm going to pop up that panel on some foam tape. Now this is something I've been trying out a little lately and it's different than what I've done before. Instead of putting the matting layer on there first and then popping it up, I'm actually popping it up above the matting layer and I think it adds just a little bit of a different kind of look than what I typically do on my cards. So I've got basically two layers of foam tape there, but this is some real thin foam tape from Scotch. Um, I didn't realize it was this thin when I bought it, but I think it's perfect. It's thinner than what I've been using lately, and I think this is going to work just perfect. I'm also adding, um, I'm also using part of the release paper to create some little flags or handles, and then I'm using the part of the panel that has the release paper still on it to try to get this lined up correctly before removing all of it and pressing everything down in place. I think this card turned out just so stinking cute and it doesn't need anything else. No extra embellishment or anything. I'm leaving it as is. Okay, I just love how this card turned out, but I did want to share one other card with you too because I just realized as I was doing the editing that in the Spellbinders Be Merry collection, I did get two different stamp sets that I made some cards out of, and I wanted to explain why I don't have a video for the other one. Looks like when I was recording the snowman one, I rather didn't record it so I want to apologize for that but these guys are so stinking cute too I mean come on this, these are used the same technique as I did with this one where I have got the matting layer and then I've got the foam tape below the main panel I did the same kind of thing on these I've got each of these little snowmen is also um, heat embossed with the outline, then colored up with some markers, and they're just so stinking cute. And for the background, the um, I've got foil snowflakes from another glimmer plate. I'll leave a link to that down below if you guys are interested. And then I also went over it with some stickles to make that snow, glistening snow, shine. And just love the way that these guys turned out. And I stamped the inside as well and used a scrap that I had trimmed off of one of the other panels on the inside for a little bit of decoration as well to make that extra special. I love the way that these cards turned out with these new stamp sets from the, this is in the Be Merry collection. And I know that you guys will too. So I want to first off, thank you so much for dropping in and watching my video with me. And remember, if I can make it, you can too. I've left links down below to all of the products that I used today. And if you're interested in any of those, head on over to Spellbinders. I've got my affiliate link down below for you as well. You guys have a wonderful day and happy crafting.